Three days ago, we marked the 22nd anniversary of the Taliban-backed terrorist attack on the United States. Two weeks ago, we marked the second anniversary of the administration's surrender to the Taliban, turning over billions of dollars of military equipment and releasing more than 5,000 of the most dangerous terrorists on the planet from Bagram's Parawan detention facility. And on January 20th, we will mark the third anniversary of the Biden executive orders that opened our borders to the world by halting construction of the border wall, rescinding the Remain in Mexico policy, and forbidding ICE from enforcing court-ordered deportations. Since that day, more than 5.7 million illegal aliens from over 160 countries have illegally crossed our border. Mr. Biden has released over 2.6 million of them population larger than the entire state of New Mexico into the United States in violation of our immigration laws. And while the Border Patrol has been overwhelmed by this unprecedented mass illegal migration, another 1.7 million known gotaways have entered as well. That's an additional illegal population the size of West Virginia. Now, since we have no access to most foreign criminal databases, we know little of the foreign criminal records of these 2.6 million illegal immigrants as they've been released into our communities. And of course, we know nothing of the 1.7 million gotaways. We know from a recent GAO report that many have already disappeared into our communities without a trace. Of 981,000 alien records they surveyed, they found that, quote, addresses for more than 177 thousand were either missing, invalid for delivery, or not legitimate residential locations. According to the GAO, the lack of valid addresses means that ICE, quote, cannot locate migrants to enforce immigration laws, including to arrest or remove individuals who are considered potential threats to national security. Of much greater concern, of course, is the 1.7 million known gotaways, people the Border Patrol has observed entering this country but could not stop because our resources are overwhelmed. Under the open border policies of the Democrats, if you illegally enter this country, seek out a Border Patrol agent and make a false asylum claim, you will almost certainly be released into our country. You will get taxpayer-funded travel wherever you want to go and lots of free stuff, including cash, food, free medical care, and even education. After six months, you can get work authorization. And when your asylum claim is finally heard and denied years from now, and you are ordered deported, that deportation order most likely won't be enforced. So why would 1.7 million illegal aliens want to evade the Border Patrol? The only two reasons I can think of is that they're either hiding criminal records or they're conducting criminal acts. We do know that among those aliens the Border Patrol has apprehended, the number of suspected terrorists has increased exponentially. In 2021, we stopped 15 of them. That was five times the number encountered in 2020, and as many as we had stopped in the four previous years combined. By 2022, that number grew to 98. And in the first 10 months of this year, that number has already grown to 146, a tenfold increase in two years. In June, FBI Director Chris Wray testified before this committee that there has been an uptick in, quote, known or suspected terrorists coming across the southern border, and that, quote, the southern border represents a massive security threat. Those are his words, a massive security threat. In August, we learned that a foreign national with ties to ISA helped smuggle over 120 uh, nationals of Uzbekistan, Russia, Georgia, and Chechnya into the United States through the southwest border. Press reports indicated that the FBI was, quote, scrambling to find the smuggled individuals since the Biden administration had released them into the U.S. And of course, this begs the question, if illegal aliens are so carefully vetted, as Mr. Mayorkas has repeatedly assured this committee, why would the FBI be scrambling to find them? Clearly, very bad actors are entering our country through our open southwest border, and I'm afraid something terrible is brewing. 
either a coordinated terrorist attack by elements that have entered over the last few years or the kind of cartel violence that has now become so common in Mexico. Now, the Democrats' witness will tell us not to worry our pretty little heads about all this. It hasn't happened yet. Well, that's precisely the attitude that the 9-11 Commission excoriated as the catastrophic failure of public policy that made us vulnerable to such a horror on 9-11. Our other witnesses, though, have a very different perspective. They've seen firsthand what's happening at the border, and they're desperately trying to sound the alarm before it is too late. I hope that we will all heed their warnings today.